a lot of research for Chesapeake Lightcraft's ore plans. In fact, it was hard to find a good set of plans for ores. There usually wasn't a lot of detail. And they expected a pretty sophisticated craftsman to make them. On the other hand, you don't have to be a very sophisticated craftsman to have a really nice set of oars. There are lots of reasons to build your own oars. Store-bought oars are expensive. A lot of them are pretty clunky too, like clubs. They're made on lathes, mass-produced. Yeah, mail-order oars are getting expensive to ship these days. I picked up pieces of ore design from lots of different designers, including Pete Culler and Phil Bolger. But these are mostly my own experiences over the last 30 years of small rowing boats and fixed seat boats. I like blades that are average or a little bit smaller than average, and there are lots of reasons for this. First off, they're just lighter, so that means less for me to have to pick up with each stroke. Second of all, smaller blades are easier to use in choppy conditions, whether you're feathering the oars or not feathering the oars. They're also more resistant to flutter. Flutter can tire you out over a long time. That's where the oar shudders as it goes through the water. These oars are very well balanced. They, uh, they slide in and out of the water without any fuss at all. The only reason for really large oar blades is if you're racing and you need to accelerate quickly. Once you're up to speed, though, and just cruising along at 50% pressure like this, which is how most of us row, these oar blade sizes are perfect. So moving inboard, I've put these counterbalances in here. Now, I've seen this feature on oars going back 100 years, maybe hundreds of years, and it has a simple reason. It's a counterbalance. It takes some of the weight uh, off the end of the oar. Not all of it, mind you, but you do notice. And it makes it a uh, much more balanced blade. Again, it also helps uh, reduce fluttering, the extra mass there. Finally, the handles. The handles are straight and a bit smaller than usual. Uh, I, now, I just have average size hands for somebody six feet tall. And uh, I find that the store-bought oars have grips that are much too fat. And uh, these grips just seem to fall into my hand uh, without any effort at all, and I find my hands aren't getting as tired. Now, uh, you might notice uh, that these handles aren't varnished, it's just bare wood, and I found that that's the best way to not get blisters. Building your own oars is fun. You just need basic shop tools, some sharp edge tools. These are very pretty and nicely balanced oars available in sizes from six feet all the way up to nine and a half feet. Perfect for fixed seat rowing boats like this one. I'm John Harris.